Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this video I'm going to revisit the Tier 7 Premium British Light Fighter, the Spitfire 16. Hello there, and here on the tarmac outside my hangar is the Spitfire 16, an aircraft that was introduced to the game in March 2022 as the reward for a mission marathon, and has now become a regular premium aircraft. This video is not a full review, I did that when the aircraft came out, there's a link in the description below to that video review and I invite you to go and look at that if you want to know everything there is to know about this aircraft. What we're going to do is just introduce this aircraft to the, the people who ha perhaps haven't seen it before and give them a flavour of what it is. So let's go and see how I've set the plane up. My Spitfire 16 is specialised, which means I have all of the equipment and consumable slots available. We'll just pop those up so you can see what I've done with them. Um, a short history of this aircraft, it's actually a Spitfire 9. Um, however, there are cosmetic differences. Um, the fuselage is cut down, or there's a bubble canopy, whichever description you prefer. The wings are clipped, which was to improve the um, roll rate at low altitudes. And the engine is an American-built Merlin that is built by Packard, and often it was configured for low altitude operations. And that has been reflected to a degree in the game, which means that this has got some differences from the Tetri equivalent tier seven Spitfire. That said, I think it's pretty clear that it's uh, meant to be a turn fighter, and that's how I've built it. Um, so I have the gun sight, I've got some special project equipment on it, a lightweight wing frame to give it even more manoeuvrability, a lightweight power unit, and then although this offset offsets manoeuvrability a little bit, um, I've got a polished skin to improve the speed. Consumables, fairly standard loadout here for me. Um, we have the first aid dressing package, pneumatic control assist for uh, helping me get more manoeuvrability when I'm in a tight dogfight, perhaps with one of the Japanese um, uh, turn fighters, A7M being an example. I can repair my control services with the emergency control system. Fairly usual choice here, engine cooling. You could consider putting on the restart bottle um, if you're worried about your engine being knocked out and de degrading your performance. Often that doesn't really matter in a turn fight, so I like to have this engine cooling so I can pursue aircraft uh, for longer. And universal ammunition. I recommend this to you over the standard ammunition. Um, I have recently been using gold ammunition to try and reduce the enormous amount of gold that I've got. Um, now you've got a choice here. There are machine guns and cannons on this aircraft, but I would probably go for the fragmentation am ammunition if I was to load gold. Many of you won't want to do that. As far as the pilot's concerned, it's a crew trainer. And ideally, you can train Millie Elliott in it. Um, Millie Elliott is a special pilot for the Tornado. Let's get the um, crew skills um, panel up. Um, and she has a special skill. In fact, she has two special skills, but once you take her out of the Tornado, this one, the Tornado Mastery skill, does not work. This one, however, does. It replaces the aerobatics skill and basically just doubles its, its effect, which makes, of course, a manoeuvrable plane like the Spitfire 16 even more manoeuvrable. It's worth doing and you're getting training into it so you can acquire some of the other skills. Unfortunately, this is not a zero point skill. It does consume your first two skill points. We just have a quick look at that manoeuvrability figure, which is the highlight of this aircraft with Milliet, Milli Elliott in there. It's 108. That's going to be competitive with almost anything that you come up against. Yes, you will have to be t um, careful against specialised um, Japanese fighters. For instance, down at Tier 6, the A65M5 uh, with Akira Akani in it will outturn this Spitfire. And you'll have to watch the Tier 8 and Tier 7 Japanese fighters if they're specialised approach with care. But you've got a pretty good chance of being able to, able to outmanoeuvre even those if you're careful. Okay, so that's how I've set the aircraft up. That's the pilot choice. Let's go and see how this aircraft performs in battle. The map for the forthcoming battle is Northern Bridgehead. It's the atonement variant, five sector map laid out in roughly five spots of a, a die configuration. In the centre, there's a tactically and strategically important air base. Um, tactically, it allows easy access to all the other sectors. Strategically, you can spawn there, always powerful when it's a central repair base. You can get a different aircraft of the same tier if you own the air base and um, you can get full repairs. On one axis, with one sector near each spawn point, there are command centres, strategically important because these release bomber flights to try and flip enemy sectors to your team. The other axis, there are a pair of make-weight uh, sectors, the garrisons. 
Here's the order of battle, and I'm bottom tier in my Spitfire 16. At tier 8, we have an unspecialized BBP 210. This is a multi role, which is really effectively a fighter. Uh, we also have a tier 8 bomber, the TU 10. And then at tier 7, we have two further bombers, a TU 2 and a Junkers 288A. The enemy team has an extra tier 8, a Yak 15, not specialized. If it were specialized, it would be difficult to turn within my Spitfire. I've got a pretty good chance because it's not specialized. They also have a specialized IL 20, a specialized RB 17. And then at tier 7, they have an IL 10 and a Junkers 288A. What we can see immediately is that I'm there are only two turn fighters in this game, and that, uh, that influences my decisions. You'll see me play immediately to get the command center, and then I will support my team by trying to lock down the um, airbase for the rest of the game. As we go into battle, this is a natively recorded replay file. It's not one of the World of Warplanes replay files, therefore you'll get to see me looking around and the reticle will appear to be accurately aimed. The video may seem a little bit jerky compared to the smoothed out versions that World of Warplanes team produces. So, as mentioned in the previous part of the video, we're going straight to the command centre and we're going to be looking for those ADAs, try and get rid of them as quickly as possible. There we are, so two of them are in line of stern, we'll have a crack at both of those. Some shots into the first one, then we'll switch to the second. Got a pulse fire these guns, the cannons will overheat very quickly. See from the indicator in the bottom left. It's the first ADA down. The next one, that's coming straight at me. Get lots of good shots into that and down that goes. That's my second kill. Now we look for the third. Gonna make a move to try and throw off the AA here. That's the roll. And now we're on to the third and final ADA. There it goes, and with that we have the sector. So I took out three ADAs, and a teammate will have taken out one other target, and that secured that sector for us. I'm going to mark what I think is a Corsair coming in. I'm not going to go after him because I want to try and get the airfield. See the AK-15? I'm looking at that. However, it's not nearest to me. I'm looking to see what I can do before I have to take on the AK. So that's an air defence aircraft. Shoot it a couple of times and then swing round to see what's on my left. Good job I did. Get to finish off a Yak 9U. I've let that shoot me, I would have known all about it. As it happens, I've got a couple of shots into it and also got the kill, fortuitously. Now we take out the air defence aircraft. Need to re-establish contact with the Yak. And as it happens, he's in a low energy configuration below me. So I fly in and I shoot him down. He goes, and that flips the sector. So now we need to clear out the other threats. This is a bot key 84 I believe. Got some good shots in. Very manoeuvrable aircraft, so I want to get him out as quick as possible. He goes down. Now I go after the IL-20. He's got a really, really good rear gunner. Look at my health bar going down there, as well as the criticals he's doing, and down I go. So we spawn back in at the airfield. Just before I spawn back in, the IL-20 went down. I'm not going to chase the heavy. It's a waste of my time, so we're looking for other targets. And my primary objective here is to try and lock down this sector as a support aircraft so the tier 8s can get on with doing something more useful. I don't want the Corsair to put a lot of 20mm shells into me, so we go over the top of that, roll around, get behind it. And make that my 8th kill of the game. Looking for more multi-rolls coming in. 72 is not going to try and manoeuvre with me, it's quick. I'll try and run away properly. What I'd really like to do is shoot at its engine. Hold more pulse firing on the cannons so I don't overheat them. Too much that is. And there we go, that's the XP 72 down. So I've kept a check on the balance of the game. Now we have just lost our command centre, but we took the enemies. So I'm going to continue to cont try and keep this sector um, for our team, rather than divert and try and take something else. Well, a lot of shots into the IL-10, I think it is. Keeping an eye on what's around me, I'm not under threat from anything else, so I can concentrate on shooting this aircraft down. Something else takes it out. It was an IL-10. 
Now we can swing up for the Corsair again. Cripple it. So it can't do this uh, wheeling maneuver as effectively. As I can line up the shots more accurately. And more effectively down that goes. Now, strangely, we do have three sectors, so we have the advantage, but the enemy have got both command centers. However, looking at the map, I can see that we're very likely to be able to take ours. In fact, we just have. So I can continue doing my work at the airfield. The ak 9 u looks like it's going to go down to the BVP. I keep facing it in case it has a stray shot at me because, of course, bots don't miss, even at three and a half thousand feet. Declined to go after the RB-17. Looking around to see what's threatening me, and then the RB-17 flies across me, so I pile some shots into it and help my teammate shoot it down. It's an important aircraft to get out of the game. There goes. That'll be the IL-20. He's trying to shoot me, even though he has an enemy aircraft on him. That's the IL-10. He's to get behind him. And I get assistance on that. But it felt like I did the majority of damage. Back up for the Corsair. A repeating refrain in this game. And he goes, more assistance. Well on the way to getting a Predator medal here. So again, we've checked the mini-map. We can see that uh, we're still three to sectors to two up. Also shooting the Typhoon. So I'm safe to continue working here. I don't need to think about going somewhere else. It's the Typhoon down. Now we see the IL-20. Going to need help here, but then equally my teammates are going to need help. We already know this has got a terrific rear gun. So everybody needs to be shooting at this. BBP puts a good load of rockets into him. I'm still on him. I don't think he's located to me. He's probably looking for the BBP. Down he goes. And that's the hero of the Sky Badge going through. So I've only got uh, less than 12,000 personal points, but I've done such good work, I've already got my five chevrons. Now we're three sectors to two down, but we have established a considerable lead, so I'm continuing to work here and make sure we don't go four sectors to one down. Although there are a couple of enemy aircraft over our command centre. We have a bomber flight going in over theirs. So with luck, we'll take their command centre as quickly as they take ours. A pair of aircraft coming in here, slightly tricky, going to fly between them. Turn on the first, one at the rear. Check what the one at the front is doing. Consider that to be more of a threat, so the Yak 9U is out. Didn't want it turning on me and smacking me hard. More shots into the ground attacker. More shots into the other ground attacker. That was close. That could have been a disaster, taking him out at this stage. Break off so I don't smash into the back of the ground attacker. And Dajan goes through. Just before I shoot down the ground attacker, the game ends. And I've performed a very good supporting role here. I've got 15,000 personal points. I'm pleased with the result. That brings me to the end of re reacquainting myself with the Spitfire 16. If you haven't seen this aircraft before, then I hope this has been a short and useful introduction. However, the full review video is linked below in the description. If you are interested in this aircraft, do go and have a look at that. I think it's a perfectly fine term fighter. It's not one of the reward aircraft that is overpowered. It's competitive without unbalancing the game. Well, I hope you found that useful and that if you did, you'll come and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Q, signing out.